What's up, everyone? I'm King the A6, and this is the first episode of One Take of A6. This is just a new series I'm doing where, in one take, I give you the happenings of my life or my mostly my game dev. But you know, sometimes I give you some tidbits into some personal shit I'm doing. So before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Picasso on YouTube, Gucci Poppy on Twitter, Social Work Unicorn, that's my wife. Uh, that's basically my support system. Man, I don't think I'd be exactly where I am right now, going where I'm going without my support system. Y'all are the greatest, and I, man, truly appreciate y'all. And there's a whole bunch of people that I didn't even name, but specifically those people because this past Thanksgiving, they really talked me up and basically told me I should be doing what I'm doing now. And they really four by just eight six. And I fuck with y'all heavy. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. But anyway, let's just jump right into it. 21. Year of the whole fool. So when I started whole fool. Birth of the whole fool. Um, that's when I started whole fool. Started making episodes. It was just supposed to be a series of shorts that I would do to have content out while I was working on another project. And then it kind of just exploded. I really enjoyed doing Whole Fool, uh, making the episodes. Then I did a couple games. Then at the end of 21, I realized, damn, every time I do some Whole Fool project, I gotta do the same fucking setup every goddamn time. And I'm a developer, and that's a no-no. So, excuse me, 22, I decided to work on Fool's Core, which is a template project for all things in this adventure as a whole fool. Now, with this template project, I wanted it, I, I, I got, I wanted it to do everything and anything. I wanted to be ready for any and everything I threw at it. And in that, I made the mistake of bloating it up to the point where I wanted to, I thought I was done with it, wanted to use it for a prototype I was thinking of and man when I tell you that shit blew up and crumbled into a million teeny tiny pieces ugh, I felt like all the work I had done this was like August I felt like all the work I had done was for naught but I took a moment step back and what I decided to do was I basically took the project through basic training I basically broke that bitch down and built it back up uh, taking out what was not needed uh, anymore and now we're here in 23 I'm almost done with it uh, fortunately the prototype that I had that I was prototyping wasn't really clicking with me like that so I decided to do get back to my roots make some misadventures a whole full episodes it's been like a year a little, a little more than a year since I've done a misadventures a whole full episode and I know some of y'all out there fiending you know what I'm saying got the crackhead vibes but yeah, so let's talk about some of the work that's going into that. Because if all goes well by March, y'all should have some new misadventures of whole food. Alright, so what we got here is an old script of misadventures of whole food. Um, I'm using Nathan Hogue's, uh hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, sorry if I'm not, uh, dialogue manager, Nathan Hogue's dialogue manager. Uh, this was way back in the day when you had to use say what to write the dialogue, but you can do that like in Godot now. Now this is the old, this is the promo uh, script. This is like the first script I ever wrote, but blah, 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 wrote for Misadventures of Whole Fool. Um, as you can see, you got it's telling it to do actions, and you can see the dialogue. But honestly, like I said, Misadventures of Whole Fool just started as some shorts to do content while I worked on something else, but then on some other project. But then Whole Fool became the project. And going forward, these episodes are going to get longer, they're going to get a lot more intricate, and I just felt that it was best to separate the cutscene, because I also want to use this system for cutscenes and the game projects I want to make. So I basically had to separate the cutscene manager from the dialogue manager, because obviously this is an add-on, I can't go in and change code. It will just get overwritten when I update the dialogue manager. Oopsies. Um, so yeah, here's Fool's Core. Um, the director, like I said, the director just does the cutscenes. This is my test scene for it. It's not doing much, but I'll show it off anyway. All it does right now. Damn, pop up a bed. 
it's doing a lot more stuff under the hood but yeah like i said it's a work in progress but even though not much is happening i feel like by march we could have some new misadventures a whole full episodes so yeah, yeah it's a really short update but um yeah that's pretty much it one more thing or if you know you you know the old hopeful episodes there wasn't no voicing and i thought that was weird there's no voice acting i don't know it just seems a little soulless so i had the idea to implement something like animal crossing undertale or banjo kazooie um i'm using a add-on i found i think it's called ac voice box Excuse the dialogue, my actual speech bubbles. They're broken right now, but. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you know, just working on giving whole fool a little bit more soul, if you get what I mean. But yeah, that's what I got working on. Like I said, it's the beginning of the year, so I ain't really got that much to update. This is kind of just a test run for uh, uh, one take of A6. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what's going on with Fool's Core. I uh, guess if you want to know what's going on with me, just play. I had to talk about this. This is also what one take of A6 is for. It's for me to talk about shit I want to talk about. Like the Resident Evil 7 playthrough I just had. Finally played Resident Evil 7, uh, 7 for the first time in VR. When Resident Evil 7 came out, you know, it just got added to my backlog. And before... Uh, switch back here for a second. And before, uh, before I got a chance to get to it, they released the VR on PlayStation. And I was just like, at that point, I was just like, yeah, I'm not playing this game until I can experience it in VR. Um, and I waited... And I waited, hopefully, because I wasn't buying a whole PlayStation VR. At that time, I didn't even have a PlayStation anymore. So I'd have to buy a system and a VR headset for it, which is like $600. Um, but I did, I do have an Oculus, so I was just like, maybe they'll do it on PC. I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited, and nothing. But unfortunately, uh, Prey Dog, I think, has a VR mod for 7. And my God. That's a that's an impressive mod for it not to be official, uh, but yeah, I played that whole game using that mod, and it was my first time and great experience. Had a excellent time. If you haven't played Resident Evil Seven or hell, if you played it and you just haven't have a VR headset lying around for your PC, go do that. Um, and also, I've been doing a level run run of Kingdom Hearts. But unfortunately, 30 hours in, my save got deleted, and my save, my save became a nobody. I don't know what happened. I'm, it's on my Steam Deck, so I was fiddling around my Steam Deck a couple days before, and I guess it, yeah, it just became a nobody. So I had to start over. Fortunately, I was able to find a save editor that allowed me to give myself the equipment I had. That's about as most as the most I could do. So I pretty much had to replay the whole game, but I did have like nine MP. Which gave me a little extra oomph to kind of run through it. Um, about 14 hours in and I'm basically back to where I was. Uh, obviously I'm not doing a synthesis. I'm not doing what was required of me for synthesis. Because I already gave myself the equipment. Um, it sucks because that will invalidate my statistics. I love statistics and I know Kingdom Hearts gives you all kinds of stats after you beat the game. So it's going to invalidate my statistics but and my time. Because I really want to know how long this is going to take me. Uh, like I said, I was like 30, 36 hours in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what my timer is right now and just add 30. And just, just have to be what it, what it is. The point of the matter is I'm going to complete the challenge, so that's the most important part. Also, uh, before we go, speaking of the Kingdom Hearts run, I did this little tracker in Godot. It's not, it's not much, but basically tracks. It basically just lists every boss mentioned in the guide I'm using. Uh, blue background means they're optional, like the first dark side fight, and then green means it's been completed. So yeah, and then it's saved, so obviously. Yeah. So yeah, 
that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the first take of one take of A6 and the first take of one take. Yeah, okay, I said that right. <laughs> the first take of one take of A6. Wow, that's a lot to say. Um, and yeah, can't wait to sit back up here and do it again. I hope you come back out. You can follow me on, until then, you can follow me on the socials, uh, by just, at by just A6 on Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. You can barely use that shit. But uh, yeah, I'm Kini A6, and I hope to see. You. Oh, shit. And I'm Kini A6, and I hope to see you back here soon. The fuck was that?